Okay, so the square root of y squared over 16, um, we need to find, it just says find the square root. And if you know your square roots, which you really need to know by now, uh, this is a pretty simple problem. So what is our problem going to, what what's the square root of y squared equal to? Y, yeah. y exactly. And actually, good stuff, it's actually the absolute value of y, believe it or not, because that could be plus or minus y, couldn't it? Over what? Four. Over 4. Good. Technically, that answer is exactly right. The absolute value of y over 4. People put y over 4, I still gave you the point, but really, this is the absolute value of y because it has to be positive, right? The square root of y squared has to be positive. Because even if that y were a negative number, if it were negative 2, well, it would get squared, it'd be 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So no matter what, if negative or positive number at the beginning, it's always going to be positive in the end because it's going to get squared in the square root of a positive number. Just don't, hey, he's got his hand up. Yes, Ben. No, you don't because that's, it's just square root of 16. There's no, there's no substitution or negative number. Okay, any other questions? Jake? Yeah, but you have to put the absolute values on it. Yes, you do. You now, I gave it to you on the last wow. test, on this particular test. I didn't mark it down because it's a pretest, but on the final, yes, you do. You have to understand that. Uh, this is number three on the chapter 11 radicals pretest. This is root 60 times root 6. So a lot of people, but a surprising number of people wrote root 360 and left it. That's not the name of this game. You're, you're asked to simplify this question. Simplify means break it down. We've been saying over and over break it down and we haven't been saying it for no reason. So when we say break it down, how do you break it down? What do you break root 60 into? There's a lot of things, but yeah, Jake? You could do uh, 30 and 2. You could do 30 and 2 and that's fine. It wouldn't be wrong, but what would be better? 20 and uh... Wait, 20 and 3. 20 and 3 is okay? Still not perfect. What's the best? Four six and ten. Six and ten. Why? Because of that root six. Uh, if true. we can get a double out, then we're good right away. So let's go root ten, root six. Let's break it into root ten, root six. And we've already got root six here, so write that down again. And guess what? When you have a double like this, then that, what's root six times root six, Jessica? Six. Just six. So it's root 10 times six. And you're done, except for the fact you can switch it around. All right? Good. If, you, if there's any corrections, well, then give it back to me and I'll start. Right. No, just times six. Just six. Six root 10. Well, we'll write it as root 10, six, and then we'll switch it around. Just put six. And now I'll just write six root 10. There it is, folks. 6 root 10. All right? That's your answer. If you left it like this, it wouldn't be wrong, but by convention, we always put the number on the left and the radical on the right, okay? It's the root of 64x squared times the root of 4y to the fourth. So what do we do in this one? We, again, we're trying to simplify these, right? So you can just write simplify here. So what's our first step? Any idea there, David? Well, I've been saying it over and over. Break it down. Break it down, exactly. Break it down. Sandy, Hazel, Logan, what's our first step back here? When we break this down, what do I mean by break it down? Shall we rewrite it? Yes, let's do that. Root 64, root x squared, root 4, root y to the fourth. If we break it down, it's really easy. Even if we don't, in this case, it's really easy anyway. But we're still going to break it down just so everybody sees it. Gian, what's the root of 64? Good. What's the root of x squared, Melissa? And what's the root of 4, Mr. Robinson? And what's the root of y to the 4th, Chase? Root of y to the 4th. Good. Good job. So we got 8x, 2y squared, and those are all times. So put little brackets around them. There you go. That's even easier to see. Good stuff. And now just to finish that off, let's put a big equal sign and write 18xy squared is our answer. 8 times 2, 16, sorry, xy squared. And that was number, number. it was D in your answer sheet here. Okay, here you would do it with this, there you go. So that was D, it was a pretty easy one because if you see this is all basically, these are all perfect squares, so that was pretty straightforward. So the square root of nine B squared R over the square root of three BR. First of all, there's something on the board right now that's just screaming at you to, to simplify. 
What is screaming at you to simplify? The 9. The 9, absolutely. The 9 is a perfect square. How about the b squared, Hazel? Is that looking like something that you might want to simplify? Yes. Absolutely. So why don't we just do that first? So this equals 3b root r. That's the basic simple first step. 3b root r. As you get good at these, you recognize your perfect squares and you go ahead and simplify them right away over the square root of 3br. Can we simplify anything on the bottom? No. Not yet. No. Not the r, not the b, not the root 3. Those are not perfect squares and these don't have even exponents in them. Can right? we simplify the r? No, the, oh, no. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. You, now that you can do. I'm just saying you can't, it's not r squared, it's not r to the fourth. Now you can rewrite this. And yet, you let's do that. 3b root r, 3b root r over square root 3, square root b, square root r. If you do that, if you break it down, like we keep instructing you to do, square root 3, square root b, square root r, if you do that, then yes, you can cancel the square root r's. That's no problem. Just <laughs> 3b root r over the square root 3 square root b square root r. Now we're left with 3b over root 3b. 3b over root 3b. Let's rewrite that. What do we do with the root 3b on the bottom? And maybe we're done. Maybe someone out there thinks we're done. I don't know. Why aren't we done? Why are we not done? Why are we not done simplifying that? Yes, Trey. 3b times 3b squared b Well, what's wrong with this right now, Mike? You can't have a radical at the bottom, so what do you do, Ian? With this is what we call what? What do we have to do to the denominator? Good, we have to rationalize the denominator. How do you rationalize the denominator? Let me give you a little exercise first. What's the square root of 100 times the square root of 100? 100. What's the square root of 100 b squared times the square root of 100 b squared? Jonathan? 100 b squared. What's the square root of xyzk times the square root of xyzk? Jessica? What's the square root of x, y, z, k times the square root of x, y, z, k? X, y, z, k. Hey, well, what's the square root of 55b squared times the square root of 55b squared? Exactly. Using that information, using that knowledge, what should you multiply that by to make this? Yes, Ben. Root 3b. Multiply by root 3b. Here, use the red pen. You multiply by root 3b on the bottom. If you multiply by root 3b on the bottom, what do you have to do on the top? Multiply You have to do the same thing on the top. That's math. It's balanced, right? You've got to do the same thing on the top, same thing on the bottom. Because what you're really doing when you multiply by root 3b over root 3b is what, Jake? What's root 3b over root 3b equal to? It's actually just equal to 1, right? Anything divided by itself is 1. So you, all you're doing is multiplying by 1, but in a kind of a tricky way. So now go ahead and do this. What do you get? Equals? That's right. 3b, root 3b. Over 3b. Right. And now to finish this over 3b. Cancel 3b. And we can cancel the 3b's, do it in red. Oh, it doesn't matter. There you go. And our final answer is root 3b. And we're done. Hey, that was a little tricky. It was kind of a lot of steps to that. But we're basically following simple principles, and you'll be fine. There was number six on the radicals pretest. Number eight on the pretest is asking you to rationalize the denominator. We just did a question on rationalizing the denominator, and what does it mean? What is it that we have to do, Kyla? What is it that's not simple about this? What do we need to do? What's what's not simplified by this? I mean, four is fine. The root five, right on the bottom. Good job. We can't have root 5 on the bottom. We can't have the root of anything on the bottom of our fraction. So what do we do? We rationalize the denominator. So Jonathan, yes, Kyla? After this question. Uh, Jonathan, how do we rationalize the denominator here? What do we do? Multiply by square root 5. Over 5, that's right. We multiply by square root 5 over square root 5. Write it down, please. OK? So we've got 4 root 5 over what? over 5. Good. This equals 4 root 5 over 5. Very simple thing to write down. It won't take you too long. And then you just circle the answer. Number. It's a D right down there. 